We have arrived to the Elite Eight in launch title madness. In today's episode, we see the blue cash cow for Sega. Sonic and Sonic Adventure take on Super Mario Brothers from the NES. We also see Super Mario World take on Luigi's Mansion from the Nintendo GameCube. Please join us as we have some of the most difficult decisions to make in this entire bracket in this very episode. Welcome to episode 14 of Launch Title oh. Madness. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Shakalaka. All right, dude. We we have gotten down to the freaking nitty gritty here. Yep. Each one of these matchups is insane. This is this like, is crazy, dude. And this episode in particular feels like it could be the final four. Yeah. And it's not. This is the Elite Eight. This is the first episode of the quarterfinals. First batch. We yeah. have Sonic Adventure from the Dreamcast going against Super Mario Bros. on the NES, which I know is controversial, but it's in the bracket. So Yeah, and it's not controversial, because NES Complex said it's a launch title, and I take whatever he says to the freaking bank. And then we also see Super Mario World from the Super Nintendo against <laughs> Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube. I think, let's not beat around the bush, let's jump into this first matchup. Sega fans' favorite little furry blue ball, Sonic, has been around since episode two of Launch Title Madness, which, believe it or not, debuted on March 15th, 2021. Needless to say, Sonic has been on a rampage through the bracket and has not left one Sega fanboy or girl with blue balls. <laughs> In Sonic's first Furious matchup, he took on Excite Bike from the NES and prevailed as he roared past that little son bitch on his dirt bike. Then in round three, Sonic took on Fusion Frenzy from the original Xbox and left Xbox fans, I mean, in a frenzy. Today, Sonic meets the plumber that he always longed to be as he's always looked up to Mario. Does Sonic Adventure have what it takes to blow past another competitor in launch title madness with the ultimate upset of Super Mario Brothers? Stay tuned. Since the March 22nd episode of Launch Title Madness, which happened to be episode three, the Super Mario Brothers had been on a quest to save the princess. Those two dumb little plumbers haven't even realized that they are in a competition. They steam past pilot wings on the Super Nintendo. And then in the following round, it went head to head with Xbox fans' favorite little feather in their cap halo. And they said, your energy sword ain't no match for my turd plunge and plunger. And it took down Halo. And today, Super Mario Brothers reignites one of the favorite playground battles of all time, Nintendo versus Sega, Mario versus Sonic. Does Super Mario Brothers in its 8-bit two-dimensional glory have what it takes to advance and try saving the princess in launch title madness? Time will tell. I just want to get it out there that Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 are my favorite Sonic games yes. ever made, and I don't typically love 3D platformers. I just shouldn't say that. I love like Ratchet and Clank and stuff like that, but some of that early 3D platformer stuff tends to not jive well. And I just want to say I'm not a fan of Sonic. Yeah. But Sonic Adventure makes me like Sonic because these games are amazing. Does it make you want to go on an advent adventure? It makes yeah. me... Not only do I love the Dreamcast, it makes me mm -hmm. like... It's just... It's such a sweet game. It's a beautiful game still to this day. Yeah. It holds up amazing. Now, here's where it's tough. Because my nostalgia, the way I was raised, the way you the were way I started in gaming was on Super Mario Bros. for the NES. A controversial launch title because the dates are all messed up. I know we've talked about this before. Yeah, yeah. It's in the bracket. You guys voted on it. So that doesn't matter. People yeah. are going to be like, well, it doesn't count. It, it's in the bracket. It counts. Yeah. For me, this is easy. Oh, I mean... Yeah, I, I, I love Sonic Adventure, but Super Mario Brothers is the, the game OG. that changed everything. Yeah. 
I can't even imagine what people were thinking the first time they played that game. Coming out of the uh, Atari 2600, playing that game, which in my mind still plays amazing to this oh, day. it's still tight. It, delivers, it still looks great. It delivers time and time again. The music's timeless. It's, it's a perfect video game. And to think that a game that perfect came out that early in the life cycle of the NES, which went on to do so many other awesome things... But Super Mario Brothers is... If you're getting an NES, that has to be one of the first games you get. Yeah, it's 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 unbelievable. I think, just universally speaking, I think more people on the planet have probably played that game or Tetris than any other video game on the planet. Yeah, I probably... Dude, my parents, who aren't gamers at all, played Super Mario Bros. Like, it, it's just a game that revolutionized yeah, gaming. it did. And I, like what would have came or wouldn't have came had that game not existed? Would Okay, would Sonic even exist if Super Mario Bros. didn't come out? I mean... We can say what ifs all day. Yeah. I'm just saying. It's the OG. It is the freaking cream of the crop. Yeah. I mean, I, I love Sonic Adventure. Not it's taking amazing. a dump on it's it. An amazing, it's made it this far, and we're not Sonic fans. So For sure. And in the last round, it beat Fusion Frenzy, which we're party game fans, and we probably normally would have leaned towards a game like Fusion Frenzy, but we picked Sonic Adventure yes. because it did some amazing things. It's just amazing. I do think it laid the groundwork for what became Mario Odyssey. I think Nintendo really started thinking like Yeah, because... And that was, that was way before us. Yeah. So, let's but, say... Super Mario Bros. Yeah, is moving on to the semi-finals. A lot of people are like, not shocked. Honestly, I'm not shocked either. One of the first games I ever played. It's amazing. But now, another tough lineup. We got Mario against his own brother. Super Mario World against Luigi's Mansion yeah. on the GameCube. Let's look at these contenders. Since Episode 5 of Launch Title Madness, which debuted on April 12th of 2021, Luigi Mario... Luigi Mario! I know it gets confusing, but the Mario Brothers' last name is Mario, so Luigi Mario and his stupid little flashlight in his haunted little mansion has been alive and it has been thriving in Launch Title Madness. Assassin's Creed Black Flag was the first one that Luigi shined his little flashlight on and said, Peekaboo, you little son bitch. And then it moved on to take on the GameCube legend Star Wars Rogue Leader. Luigi once again in the GameCube versus GameCube battle prevailed as the ultimate launch title on the Nintendo GameCube. But today, he faces his fellow Mario brother, the brother that's always got the spotlight, always been in the limelight, yeah. But Luigi says, I don't care about your limelight, because I got a flashlight. Does Luigi have what it takes to take down his brother, who's always got all the glory and all the women? I don't think he ever got any women, well, except for the princess, but that's besides the point. Of course, your shoes were always tied together. Doesn't matter! Let's see if Luigi's Mansion can prevail in another round of launch title madness. In the March 29th episode of Launch Title Madness, which was episode four, by the way, we saw the debut of Super Mario World. Most people will tell you that Super Nintendo is the greatest console of all time, and it just so happens that a lot of people will also tell you Super Mario World is the greatest game of all time. Now you're playing with power, super power. And in its first matchup, it took on Sega Saturn's beloved Panzer Dragoon. This was a tough one to call, but Super Mario World prevailed and moved on to round three, where it encountered the Nintendo Switch version of Zelda Breath of the Wild. It got people's panties all in a bunch and some folks jumped on their bed and tried shoving a remote up their ass as Super Mario World prevailed and said, Link, you're sorry S Steel ain't got nothing on me, son. Today, Mario goes head to head with Luigi. It's kind of an awkward tale because Luigi's also in Super Mario World, but just for namesake, we're saying Mario first Luigi. We're saying Super Mario World against Luigi's Mansion. Let's find out who is the victor, Vector. All right, this one is really tough for me. Um, Super Mario World is uh, probably my, my second favorite Mario game. I like Mario 3 probably a little bit better, 
But catch me on the right day, and I could I could probably go either way. Luigi's Mansion, though, it has it has a charm. It literally launched with the GameCube. Luigi's standalone game. What were they thinking? Brother against brother in this matchup. It's like the Civil War all over again. <laughs> it's freaking crazy. This is so tough because the GameCube didn't do as well. Yeah, yeah. It when it launched. And that might have been because it launched with Luigi's Mansion. Yeah. But when you play Luigi's Mansion, you're like, this game is so unique, so weird, so out of the box thinking. Super Mario World is also an amazing game. And I know people get upset because they say it, it launched with the Super Nintendo, like it was a pack in. And it's like, not with every box. Yeah, and it. That game would have done well regardless. Yes. It, so it didn't do I well know because. We got a couple comments there, like, yeah. well, it was a pack in. Who cares? It still is an amazing game. It's a superior game of the two. But Luigi's Mansion, such a risk for Nintendo to launch with that. Hmm. I'm also thinking, like, if I'm going to, which one would I rather play? That one's tough because I'd rather play both of them. I love, <laughs> I, I love that, yeah. them so much. But then I look at replay replayability. Super Mario World... I know how to get to with Bowser really quick. I know how to do the shortcuts. I know how to beat it the long way. I know there's so many hidden things and yeah. all this replayability that's just amazing. Luigi's Mansion, I know there's like hidden stuff, kind of, but it's mostly straightforward. Yeah, yeah. It's mostly like, oh, go into this room, stick up this ghost, go. And I'm not saying that's not a bad thing. It's an amazing game. It is, it is. We play it every year. Um,. <sighs> It's a great October game. It, as much as I want to pick Luigi's Mansion, there's something Just about me that different. does. I mean, Super Mario World's an icon. And it's it. I get it. It's kind of maybe reaching a point of like, well, that's kind of annoying. Mario wins, Mario wins. I think it speaks to the greatness of what they were doing at it, the time with the Mario also, games. the way we grew up and our nostalgia is Nintendo. Yeah. So that's why everyone's like, oh, I always pick Nintendo. It doesn't. That's just the way we know things. You know? Yeah, yeah. If I would have grown up on the Genesis and Sonic was my guy, I, well, I, I, don't I was know. just in the comment sections uh, a couple days ago talking with somebody from the UK, and it's different how region-based video games are. Yeah, like, it's crazy. It is so so crazy. You know, computers and Sega had a major impact in the eight-bit and sixteen-bit era in you know the UK and so on and so forth. And where I grew up, Midwest, North America. I, I literally, as a kid, now, I, I learned later on, of course, but as a kid, I thought the Sega Genesis was the first Sega console. I never seen a Master System until my teens. Dude, and I, I was did, born in 86. Like, that that's pretty crazy, dude. And I didn't even know Sega was a thing till I was way adult, and the first console I ever saw from Sega was the Dreamcast. And I was born in 94, so obviously it was a little past all that, but still, mm -hmm. I know Sega didn't do as well, and Nintendo's like a dominating factor, but... That's just the way I was raised. Yeah. Like, it's... There's something to be said for that. But I also think when you strip everything away and get down to the nuts and bolts, I think Super Mario Brothers is a better video game than Sonic Adventure. And I think Super Mario World is a better video game than Luigi's Mansion. As much as we love the other games that we mentioned. As much as we love the latter, yeah. This is, this is really tough because if you're going to pick up a GameCube... You need Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, for sure. If you're going to pick up a Super Nintendo, you need Super Mario World. Oh, well, on the prior matchup, that applies. Yeah, to it both applies to both. Yeah. It applies to. That's what makes this. That's why I'm like, this is the Elite Four. Yeah, yeah. Even though it's not. Yeah. It's just a very top heavy bracket. Yeah. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. I love Luigi, and I also hate him because he's annoying as f in that. Yeah, game. but he. Mario. Uh, <laughs> he is, but I I love like anything Luigi that comes out like that Luigi bro Super Luigi Bros where oh, you can play backward. Yeah, that's really. Cool. I love anything Luigi that comes out, but and you I know, love you Luigi's can play as Luigi in the regular Super Mario Bros. Yeah, two player. See, and you play it by yourself, so you play as both. That's right. Yeah. You get grown up. You get more turns. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think Super Mario World. Yeah. Advances as tough as it is, and we're eliminating two amazing games. But, but we I mean, have that's, to. That's what has to happen. We have to. Yeah. And this is tough because I love these games, and now I'm like thinking in my head like, if we're limiting them, I'm like picturing limiting them forever, and that's like really tough. It is, yeah. And I mean, I I kind of always have had that mindset when we did the console madness was, if we had to be left with one console, one console for one launch title forever, what would it be? And 
it gets to a point where it's especially in launch on madness it's like okay it did amazing at launch but if if we have to be left with one game yeah we don't want to be stuck with a game that was great eight, 20 years ago. Yeah. We want to be stuck with a game that's great now. I think replayability is a big factor. Yeah, Super Mario that. World is amazing. Mm -hmm. And if we're being honest, we play Luigi's Mansion once a year. We play Super Mario World how many times a year? I mean, S yes. 10 to 20? Yeah. yeah, whenever we play, even even on the Switch, like the app or whatever, we're playing that game all the time. It's Super Mario World is moving on. That was a very tough episode, but it was also kind of easy. Yeah, it was tough to see Luigi's Mansion and Sonic Adventure go. Yeah. That was the tough part. But I think they were pretty easy decisions. It was, yeah. just because of the way we were raised. Yeah. Speaking of raised, let's talk about freaking Iowa breweries. Toppling Goliath. I mean, this is your jam. Pompeii Take Beach. Take it away. IPA with pineapple and mango. So this is a offshoot of their Pompeii, which is just a straightforward IPA. Which we have covered before. I, channel, we covered correct? it early on, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. This is a tropical vacation in a glass. A fusion of mango and pineapple in their already fruity Pompeii. Ah, this is this beer, man. So good. It is. It differs greatly, though, I feel like, then, the original Pompeii. Yeah, dude, this literally tastes like a smoothie. Yeah. It tastes like fresh mango. Fresh pineapple. Just like... And it's thick. Yeah. It doesn't taste like an IPA. It doesn't. I'm not getting many hop characteristics. I feel like it's almost closer to a sour, fruited sour. But it's not It's not puckery. No. It's not a, no. Dude, just, I'm not getting that IPA hop kick. Oh it's, it's divine. It has, a, it has a bite to it because it's like... It feels thick because of the fruit. Dude, it, Top and Goliath, man. I, you guys are amazing. It's a really good beer. I feel like the fruit maybe tames out the hops in yes. this beer. Yes. This is definitely an amazing summer beer. Like a hot summer day, you drink this guy. It's like refreshing. It doesn't even taste like a beer. Yeah. I feel like this would be a beer. This would be a craft beer for people that don't drink beer. Oh, like absolutely. This is so, I think anybody would like anyone, this. Anyone. Yeah. Give this to grandma. Give this yeah. to your sister. You give this to freaking your brother in law. This is, everyone would love this. This is so good. I totally agree. Top and Goliath. Which the unique thing is. It's amazing. I think it pairs well with the games in advanced. I feel like Ooh. you put anyone in front of Super Mario Brothers or Super Mario World, they're going to love it. Yeah. Hardcores, they're stuff to unlock. Yeah, you can, you, can, you can dive deep into it, and other people are like, man, okay, I just got to jump and run. Okay. Yeah. Maybe this whole thing isn't as hard as we thought it was. It's not over yet. Yeah. It's not over yet because in the semifinals, we have to pair Super Mario Bros. against Super Mario World. It's going to be out of control. That's going to be tough. The next episode is going to be out of control, too. Oh, my God. Because the dark horse in this whole thing, Tech and Tag, which I'm so surprised is still alive, yeah, so is going against F-Zero on the Super Nintendo. And then we see Zombie U from the Wii U. We have a Wii U game still alive. That's crazy. It's bizarre. Against Super Mario 64, Robert's favorite game of all time. Ah. Uh, I I'm I'm honestly shocked we have a Wii U game in the Elite Eight. Yeah. And I'm shocked Mario 64 has made this made it this far based on the way I feel about it and the way you feel about it. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Tech and Tag, I'm surprised it made it this far, and I'm really surprised Zombie U is still hanging on. But Zombie it's U's, just a, it's, the, it's the way the bracket Zombie shaped. U's, yeah, it's kinda had kind of a pretty easy path to this point, but it's here. You know, it could. You know, you never. You know, you know the NCAA tournament works. Upsets can happen. They can. Yeah. Although 16, they're not likely, they can happen. Sixteen seater, dude. That's that. Let's yeah. get your bets going right now, guys. Put them in the donations. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, if you guys want to jump on FanDuel or DraftKings, the bracket is available to be bid on there, yes. so you guys can wager your bets and all Starting that. Starting bid though is one hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. So yeah, just saying. Uh, just don't Make sure you get that done. How awesome would that be? be if amazing. we were on FanDuel Sports. But anyway, guys, the series is coming to a close. We appreciate everyone who enjoys it. Those of you who don't, whatever. Go fuck yourselves. Uh, we're having a good time, and a lot of people, other people are as well. But we appreciate those of you who do enjoy it for tuning in to Launch Channel Madness right here on the one and only Gaming Off the Grid. Cheers. And those of you who aren't, go fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sega fans' favorite little furry blue ball, Sonic, has been around since... Ep
We have arrived at the Elite Eight of Launch Title Madness. In today's episode, we... In the, should I say in the prior episode? Assassin's Creed Black Flag was the first one that Luigi Sly... That Luigi Sly... That Luigi shined his little flashlight on and said, Peekaboo, you little some bitch. <laughs> Super Mario Bros. versus his arch enemy. Let's find out who is the victor, Vector. That's <laughs> <laughs> what this is all about. Pompeii Beach. Looks like orange juice. Maybe it is. <laughs> wow. Okay. It's literally a smoothie. Yeah. Wow. Dude, that's just like fresh fucking mango. These are some of the most difficult matchups yet in the entire series. Do you have what it takes to endure it? 